This movie will demonstrate the technique of genital examination in the cow by rectal palpation. The specimen which is used for this demonstration has been sectioned to show the frontal view of the pelvic cavity. The organs suspended are seen in the pelvic inlet. The cervix lying on the floor of the pelvic cavity, the body of the uterus, the bifurcation of the uterine horns, as well as the horns themselves, the bladder, the ovaries, the large structure which suspends the ovaries and uterus on either side is the broad ligament. The rectum and mesorectum. Rectal examination depends entirely on the tactile sense. A thorough knowledge of anatomical landmarks is necessary for recognition and orientation of special structures and organs. Some of the landmarks which are important for general orientation include the pelvic inlet, the pelvic brim, the iliac shaft, and the walls and floor of the pelvic cavity. The cervix, because of its distinct characteristics and relatively constant position, is the most useful landmark for identification of the genital tract. It can be recognized by its firm, cylindrical, and somewhat irregular structure, being about 7 to 10 centimeters in length and 3 to 4 centimeters in diameter in the normal non-pregnant cow. The cervix should be located by inserting the hand to the pelvic inlet. The fingers are slightly flexed and in the anterior part of the pelvic cavity they are slid down the lateral wall to the pelvic floor and toward the other side. The cervix is now being grasped and it can be seen to be freely movable. The size, form, position, and consistency of the cervix should be noted. Because of its distinct form, it should not be confused with any other structure in the general area. Thorough palpation of the uterine horns is impossible in the normal position. Normal location is beyond the reach of the palpator due to the limited length of the mesorectum. Before thorough and systematic examination of the uterine horns can be made, they must be retracted into the pelvic cavity. In fact, retraction is the key to reliable rectal examination of the uterine horns, particularly in early pregnancy diagnosis. For purposes of better illustration of the manipulative procedures involved, the rectum of the specimen has now been removed. The technique of retraction will now be illustrated. The cervix is located and found to be freely movable. It is pulled upward and posteriorly. This is done to bring the uterine horn and the broad ligament up above the pelvic brim. The uterus is held in this position by placing the thumb underneath the body of the uterus. The next step involves grasping of the ventral anterior edge of the broad ligament. This is accomplished 
while the fingers are maintaining the position of the uterus. The broad ligament is grasped in the angle between the ovarian tip of the uterine horn and the ovary. Using gentle, short finger movement, the horn is gathered into the palm of the hand. The fingers are moved further medially until the ventral intercorneal ligament is identified. The dorsal intercorneal ligament is too weak and too thin to be used for retraction. The inter ventral intercorneal ligament is utilized for fully retracting the uterine horns into the pelvic cavity. Retraction is completed by dorsally reflecting the uterine horn. The entire length of the uterine horn can now be examined. Because of the importance of this procedure of retraction in the technique of rectal palpation, it will now be repeated in a step-by-step -step fashion, pointing out some of the common problems encountered. The cervix is first grasped and lifted and pulled posteriorly. The broad ligament, being a very pliable and yielding structure, allows the fingers to be inserted completely beneath the cervix. The normal position of the cervix is entirely pelvic on the midline of the pelvic floor. However, there may be deviations from this normal site. For example, in Guernseys and Shorthorns, even in the non-pregnant normal cow, the cervix may be located partially abdominal. In these cases, the hand, instead of grasping the cervix, should be slid under the body and basal portions of the horns in order to bring the broad ligament toward the pelvic cavity. The broad ligament otherwise tends to remain out of reach of the examiner. The next step is to grasp the broad ligament by placing the fingers in their entire length underneath the anterior edge. This step is one which is likely to present the most difficulty to the beginning palpator. He may be too timid and loses the horn in his attempt to gather it into the palm. More often, the anterior end of the horn may be coiled beneath the edge of the broad ligament and is difficult to uncoil. Two suggestions can be made to overcome this difficulty. One is to grasp the uterine horns instead of the cervix which leads to elevation of the uterine horn sufficiently to permit uncoiling. If this is not possible, the broad ligament is grasped at the customary site and is held in position with the little and fourth finger while gentle but determined massaging manipulations are used to uncoil the tip of the uterine horn. Once the uncoiled horn is gathered into the palm of the hand, it is pulled posteriorly and the fingers are slid further medially until the ventral intercorneal ligament is encountered. The hold on the ventral intercorneal ligament then is utilized in fully retracting the uterine horns into the pelvic cavity. Retraction is completed again by dorsally reflecting the uterine horns.
To maintain the uterus in the retracted position, the ventral intercorneal ligament should be at the level of the ischiatic arch, the cervix should be in an upside down position, and the uterine horns entirely within the pelvic cavity. If this position is not attained, retraction has only been partially completed and the uterus is likely to slide again into the abdominal cavity and retraction will again have to be repeated. The procedure just described for retraction is successful in all non-pregnant cows and in pregnant animals up to 90 days. In pregnancies exceeding 50 to 60 days and in cases of pyometra, hydrometra, or a corresponding uterus, retraction of the horns will require a special effort. The hand is inserted further over the pelvic rim and the horns are lifted rather than pulled posteriorly. The method of retraction, which begins with direct location of the ventral intercorneal ligament, is possible in a few younger animals with the uterus located in the pelvis. Generally, this method will fail and is not recommended for routine rectal palpation. Peristalsis and tenesmus may interfere with retraction regardless of what method is used. Peristaltic waves might occur during retraction, and if they are not too severe, the uterus may be maintained in the position by cupping the hand in a cone-shaped fashion and pressing the uterus to the pelvic floor or wall. Once the uterus has been retracted, the horns are systematically examined for pregnancy, characteristic changes of the estrous cycle, and abnormality. The uterine horns are examined by applying pressure with all four fingers and the thumb starting at the base and continuing over the entire length of the horn. The horns should be examined for their presence, size, form, consistency, and contents. Care should be taken to ascertain that both uterine horns have been examined over their entire length. 